Uh, I'm probably a traditionalist or, or, or a, a, some sort of a relic, but when I watch a flickering film of life scurrying past me at the station in a large city, or when I have to move as prescribed by custom and obligation in a congested circle of people, I'm almost overwhelmed by an even greater loneliness and strangeness. One can almost never be lonely in the solitude of the Antarctic, where one is daily overwhelmed by an abundance of observations and new impressions. And when, despite everything, a longing for people surfaces, it's extinguished again as quickly as the faint strip of the southern lights in a gap in the clouds. In the desolation and loneliness of the powerful surroundings, one experiences more than elsewhere a God-filled yet godless mystique, but imbued with the inseparability which links us to the dust of the earth. And, uh, for sure, the uh, water conditions have big impact. So, uh, I will say. There seems to be a difference of opinion amongst us as to which is the correct way to use a sleeping bag. There may almost be said to be sides on the subject, hence the following. On the outside grows the fur side, on the inside grows the skin side. So the fur side is the outside and the skin side is the inside. As the fur side is the outside and the skin side is the inside, one side's the skin side inside and the first side on the outside. Without any narrowly circumscribed, precisely, precisely specified idea of a god, nonetheless, <coughs> one is close to the Almighty without the benefit of crucifix, communion, mass, confession or mediation. And I think most of you maybe when you spent a week or so here will, will maybe, that may, may, may resonate in some way. One of the one of the, the sort of best known 20th century poets, T.S. Eliot, an American who spent quite a bit of time, I think, in, in, in Britain as well. Um, he did write this poem in which he talked about the fourth person, which alluded to Shackleton's crossing of South Georgia. And it does not matter a particle what you do with the ballet thing; someone's sure to tell you it's the outside inside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the things to me about Shackleton's character was he was obviously quite um, um, uh, an outgoing, expressive person, and he had a great interest in poetry. And I think that was part of the romantic nature of him. He had vision, and uh, some people say charm as well, which he may have abused or used depending on what the situation was. Um, but I think and I hope during the centenary years of the endurance thing that, that his poetic side, he was very keen on Tennyson, he did write his own poetry, which I'm not going to read now, but I, there are a couple of poetic things I want to read uh, uh, which are connected with Antarctica. Now, we were, we were very fascinated by that rather moth-eaten looking emperor penguin. And there's a contemporary American poet who wrote, wrote, and she wrote this poem, which I think is probably about an emperor penguin. The penguin is an awkward bird. At least, that's what I've always heard. It swims and models, never flies, when other birds act otherwise. Its workday outfit seems so formal, and that, that I think is hardly normal. It keeps its egg upon its feet, which doesn't sound very neat. Still, I guess the penguin does its best to raise a child without a nest. It's not exactly a paradise living on a slab of ice. One of Shackleton obviously first went with Falcon's grandfather, Captain Scott, on the Discovery, then had his own trip where he got very close to South Pole, and then when the Pole had been won, so to speak, he decided on his own trip to cross Antarctica. Now, that wasn't his own idea. It was 
uh, an idea of a Scotsman, and then was followed up by a German called Filchner. And Filchner went down in a ship called, appropriately, the Deutschland in about 1912, and he was going to cross the Antarctic, and on it he had a guy called um, Ludwig Kohl. Anyway, Ludwig Kohl and I went down and got terrible appendicitis and had to hop off in South Georgia and then fell in love with the whaling manager's daughter, etc., etc. Anyway, he came back to Antarctica, having not been able to go to Filchner, and Filchner failed to cross the continent, uh, as did Shackleton later. We should not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and to know the place for the first time.